So spotlight, it comes in the same way as the point light, create new spotlight. There's actually two ways we can create it. I can go and say, apply the default settings, like always, then it gets created in the center of my scene. But much like the trick that we've learned with cameras, if I already know the direction I'd like it to come from, I can go and look at that through my viewport through my perspective view, and I say I wanted to make a backlight, I could do something like this, and I'm thinking, hey, this is where the backlight is gonna point from. And then I can go and say, create new spotlight, and then I'll just go and select the second option here, apply active viewport transforms. If I do that, the spotlight gets created in the same position that my perspective view camera currently is, and as I dolly back, I can see that here it is. So that lets Dash Studio create something in the spot that I was kind of in my virtual viewport there. That's also handy. So you can use either of these options. Works with point lights as well and works with cameras too. I'll leave both of these in so that we can have a little fun with both of them. The one thing that's really different about the spotlight when compared to the point light is that under the light tab here, we have the spread angle. And that is something that we didn't see on the point light. If I go and left click and drag that, you can see that it gets bigger and this gets smaller now. So if you wanted to constrain light to a particular portion of your scene, that's a really nice way of doing it. Like if you're making God rays, or if you wanted to put a light spot literally on a table, on an ashtray where a cigarette is burning or something, spotlights are ideal for that. I wouldn't use point lights for that. Point lights are good if you wanted to illuminate rooms. You know, you dot a few point lights around, but a spotlight is great if you want to emphasize one particular part. So like in this case, I might want to point this at my character's back or her shoulder. I might go and make that a little bit bigger, like so. And if I wanted to do that, I can go and either use my regular manipulator tools to put that in position. And when I'm here, maybe I wanted to have that light at her right shoulder. I'd have to go and angle this now. And then I'm thinking, well, actually, maybe it needs to be over further to the right a little bit like so. And when I do that, then I have to go and recorrect the rotation. And maybe then I have the same thing with the height and I want to go and do this. And then I have to go and, you know, select the height and do that. There's thankfully an easier way that lets Dash Studio track objects. And I find that really, really helpful when I set up these spotlights. And that is called the constraint. Every node has that. Every node can be set up to track another object. So if I select that spotlight and head over to my parameters under general here, I have a constraint option. And that lets me point my light at a different object. With the Genesis characters, we're quite lucky in that I can go and pick that directly from a list. So if I left click and drag that, this window comes up and it lets me select either a different object or a node inside another object. So very, very cool on my Genesis figure. If I go and select the figure and hit accept, then notice that the light now points at her feet. That's because that's where the manipulator is. And I might not really want that. So if I wanted that to point at her upper body, I can just go and select that menu again and then drill down into the Genesis figure. So I have to go to the hip and then the abdomen lower, abdomen upper, chest lower. Chest upper is a good area to point it at. You can also point it at the neck lower. Either of these will work. Let's go and use chest upper. And as soon as I hit accept, watch what happens. The light points here. It's kind of what I wanted to illuminate. And that's nice. So I don't have to worry about rotation anymore. Now when I go and move my spotlight around, it is following my character along, which is really neat. Works with height as well. So if I go and move this higher up, that works. It always goes and points at my at the position that I've just selected there. So very nice. It's a really nice helper function. So if you wanted to experiment with what lights do as you move them around, this is really your key to happiness. And not having that by default in other programs is really weirding me out. I gotta tell you absolutely honestly. If you don't want to use a node inside a figure to use this function, you can also create yourself a different object for that. Like we talked about the null object. If you go and create one of those in the center of the scene, like here, I'll call this one the light helper. 
and then I'll go and select my spotlight here and go and point it at that. So instead of pointing it at a portion within my Genesis figure, I can go and point it at my light helper object now, which is this invisible null object. It doesn't really do anything, but now that my light is pointing at it, I can go and take my light point helper and it now goes and corrects the position of my light which is kind of neat so i can now go and move that over here and now my light will follow the point which is really really neat so that's also a possibility of using this point at option two very convenient ways and then once you've got that set up either with the helper object or with your character you can go and select your light again and then set up the same properties that we had with the point light a moment ago so under light under photometrics i'm going to want to make that a bit brighter like 50,000 is that 50,000 or 500,000 i don't know so then filament gives me a little preview here what that looks like I think I might have accidentally put one zero too many in there. Let me go divide that by 10, and then that's only a tenth of that. And that gives me that nice separation that I was talking about earlier. And now I can go and maybe move it down a little, move it further over to the right or to the left, and I'll see what the effect of the light is all in real time as a little preview here. That's, that's quite neat. Maybe that's a nice dramatic effect that I'm after here. All the other properties are the same. I might go and turn that angle down a little bit. If I only wanted to emphasize something that she's wearing on her ear or something, I can go and narrow that right down. Or I can move this like, you know, in Sergio Leone's Westerns, I can put a spotlight directly on the eyes, you know, when they're all dangerously looking at one another and stuff. And then when it's time to preview, I switch this over to iRay and then, you know, I'll see the full effect. Let's use the other spotlight quickly down here and do the same thing with it. So that's our other spotlight. Head over to General Constraints once again and use my Light Helper object to track it. Now it points at that as well. I'm going to move that over to the left-hand side a little bit. And we don't see a real preview here of the light because the intensity is not set up properly. So let's go to back to Photometrics and say 25,000. And there we see a little bit of a preview here already. Good stuff. Okay, let's see what this looks like with iRay and then make some adjustments and see if we're happy with the light quality. If we wanted to make that a bit softer and whatnot. Oh yeah, look at that. I can see the side light here. That's way, way too strong. <laughs> that's way too strong. So I'm gonna go and turn that down to maybe like divide that by two. That gets softer, but they're both harsh lights. So, you know, it's, it doesn't look it doesn't look fantastic because we haven't set the light geometry this is still very very light let me go take a zero out of that there that's probably enough we don't want to overdo it here at all but light geometry as we talked about this before let's head over to area and turn that from a point light into a disk light even with the default values that's going to look much nicer and then these shadows here they're going to they're very harsh they're being caused by the other light that's the spotlight here. Let's go and put that also from point to disk and then watch as these shadows get softer. Make that number a little bit larger, maybe 50. 50 might be too much. No, oh, there we go. That's nice and soft. That's nice and soft and believable. Very good. Very good. And that's how you can play with spotlights. You can also use these lights in conjunction with one another. So you don't have to just use either the HDRI or the parametric lights or the scene lights. You can use them in conjunction with one another. Let me make a small adjustment here. I'll go move the side light over to the right. And this would now give her a fairly harsh shadow on the right hand side of the face and also on the rest of the body. If I kind of like the light effect, but I need something to soften up the shadows here, you can just blend in a little bit of HDRI from say the default one or one that you pick. So the magic between all these tools is that they complement one another so well. So rather than setting up a third spotlight, which in a studio I'd have to do and you know brighten up the, the front of the body here, I can just go over now to my my render settings tab into the environment tab and just use the default HDRI here and not set that to one. I mean, I could set that to one and that will just go and blow everything out and all the drama is now gone, but I can go and blend that in just a little bit, like maybe with 0.2. And that already takes 
care of some of the issues that we had. Maybe point two was a little bit too much, so maybe point one is enough. Whatever the doctor ordered, whatever floats your boat, really. So also give you your hair back here, Dazelle. That looks much nicer with hair. It's still a little bit dark, but uh, you get the point. You can just go blend these things in. You don't have to use a HDRI exclusively or spotlights and point lights exclusively. I could now, if I wanted to, literally put a point light. If I'm happy with the rest of the body, I could just put a point light in front of her face and just brighten that up just ever so slightly subtly. And then gradually feel my way to my preferred lighting of my preferred scene. Like if I now say my HDRI's shadow is pointing the wrong way, I maybe wanted to point that 90 degrees to the right. I could just go over to the dome setting here and then say dome orientation Y. Let's set that to 90. Uh, that was the wrong way now. Now it points from the side. So let me go ahead and put that to minus 90. And then the HDRI goes straight from the front. So that should illuminate her face and take care of that. And I've got to tell you, the best way to get to terms with all this is to practice, practice, practice. Put all these little tips and tricks into action and see what happens when you change values. And don't be discouraged if it takes a little longer to load. This is why filament is so nice. It could give you that little bit of a preview there that is almost there if you set it up properly, like we've discussed earlier. Yeah, like now her face is a little bit too dark still. So one point light will literally take care of that. So let's go and do that. And you can do this with filament as well. Create new point light in the default position here. Shouldn't have deleted the one I had in the beginning. <laughs> Let's move that towards a face, something like that. Move it forward like so. And then we'll go and have a look what needs to be adjusted here. So probably intensity, probably geometry. Let's take care of that. Instead of point light, let's use a disk or also a sphere. A sphere is also an idea. So that would then still act like a point light, but it'll shine in all directions. So you could do that as well. Let's take a sphere. That is much softer. And then, of course, photometrics as well. Let's go and take that up to maybe like maybe times 10. It's getting there. It's getting there. It might give her too much light on the, on the rest of the body, but it certainly has brightened up the eyes here. It also acts as a little catch light in her eyes, which is kind of nice. If we look closely, we'll see that little reflection here. That is quite nice. And then without it, if I just go switch that off, then we have that little shadow again. The, the face isn't quite bright enough. So, you know, that, that's a way to just brighten that up again. I talked more about how to use lights than just about the light parameters. I hope that was okay. We're going to go and revisit that and we're going to see how to build a character from scratch with lights like this. In the next video, we're going to talk about a related way of setting lights, namely with something called mesh lights. Very exciting. Grab yourself another drink and I'll see you there.